And welcome back to RedHeart.com as well as the Crochet Crowd. I'm your host Mikey and today's tutorial we're going to explore the dusty snowflake afghan. Let's go down to the studio and I'll show you how to crochet up this fabulous afghan in just a snap. Here's a closer up version of one of the motifs that we'll be working with today. We've got two. We're going to be doing this one and we're going to be doing a little center square. Now the advantage to this particular afghan is that there's no sewing required at the end. So basically you are going to start off and you're going to do all of the large motifs. The first one is going to be by itself and I'm going to be showing you how to do that. And then once you get the first one done, you're going to start attaching on the final revolution to its neighbor. And so essentially once you get more and more neighbors, you just got to be keeping an eye on where they attach. And then essentially we just come back and just do three rounds of the interior of the square and then we just attach it at the certain points as well. This afghan is really simple. Here's the back version of it what it looks like in the back. So you can see it's a lot different on the back and this is really easy. So I'm going to have some tips for you and I'm going to tell you that in just a moment. To speed you up in this process you need to do so many motifs in order to make this work. Now what I would strongly recommend to you is that do all of the interior just like so with these chains first do all of them. So that essentially you don't have to really fuddle around with the yarn, changing the yarns every back and forth. Just do them all at one time. It's just really easy. Then come back and do all of the next blue section on all of them. And then come back and then do the white and then the final two layers of the blue. It is so much easier if you go into an assembly kind of idea because it's easier to remember the pattern. And again, I would recommend you doing the, the squares at the end. But I would recommend maybe you can do all of the white by itself for all of them and then come back and just do the blue and then it just also makes it easier to remember the pattern. The final tip today is three years ago I couldn't understand this pattern but I think over the years I've developed an idea and an eye for reading patterns and that I started last night and I realized that it's actually very simple once I got it. So I think it's just over time being able to understand what patterns are asking for. What you're seeing here in the chains, that's an overlay and essentially when we are going around you're going to see these and you're going to think what is going on and what's essentially happening is that you're starting the white, you're creating the chain but then you start the next layers with these just loosely hanging and by the time we get to the back to the white that's when we seal the deal so it pulls it up and so it's in a position. So it's kind of an optical illusion at the same time. So without further ado, let's grab our yarn. It does ask for a size 5.5 millimeter crochet hook to size I and then it does use Super Saver. Now Daniel prefers that the yarn was variegated around the snowflake as per the afghan in the, in the pattern. I did mine solid so you can decide what works for you. I'd really like to see the snowflake on a red background. I think that may be really Christmassy as well. Again, we're just going to grab our yarn. My snowflake will be white. You can make your snowflake any color but this is the actual snowflake snowflake itself that we're going to start off with. So make sure it's the color of the snowflake that you would like. You can make mixed colors too if you wish. So let's uh, begin. This Remember this slip knot never counts as one and we want to chain five. So one, two, three, four and five. Let's form a ring by inserting the hook into the beginning chain, pulling the yarn through and through and that will begin your first ring. Let's begin round number one. In round number one we're going to immediately start off with chaining a three. One, two and three and let's do 15 double crochets into the center of this ring so it goes around the ring and see what I just did with the straggler. I'm just pretending the straggler is part of that ring so it traps it under position. So here's the thing. Crochet in the rules of crochet, chaining a three counts as a double crochet. So if you're chaining or if you're doing 15 double crochets all the way around and the chaining of three counts is one, that'll mean that you have 16 posts going all the way around. Now you don't hear me chatting with you and telling you where I am right now. So what I want to do is that I need to make sure that there's 16 posts going all the way around or your, your uh, afghan is not going to work out. The square will be off. So just looking at each um, post, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we've got 10. I'm going to continue to count now. 11, 12 and 13, 14, 15 and 16. So it was 16 with your chaining a 3 to count and let's just join it at the top of the chaining 3 to form the circle and that will conclude round number 1. Let's begin round number 2. Round number 2 is about creating the spoking effect on the snowflake. So you're going to think it's weird. 
stick with it. It won't be. So we're gonna chain one and we're going to single crochet into where we joined like this. And now let's create the spokes that appear in the snowflake and how you do that is you chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And simply come back down, skip the next double crochet and go to the second over for another single crochet. So that was one. Now here you go. If you had 16 going all the way around and you were jumping over one like we are, this means that you're gonna have eight spokes all together. So let's begin another one. Chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Come back down, skip the next one, go to the second over. Continue to do that all the way around. When I come back, I'll have that done and we'll just join it with a slip stitch and then carry on to round number three. We're coming up to the end of round number two. I still have to do one more spoke, but you want to make sure you, you're counting these loops. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And I have to have eight, and I still have more stitches to do. So in the final, you're just going to chain your seven, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Coming back in, but we want to join in to where we started at the, at the beginning single crochet. We're going to fasten this off at this time and we do now have seven of these gaps. So to fasten off, we're just gonna snip our yarn like so and I just wanna grab this strand and pull it through all the way. And what I wanna do is that we want to weave this in and out of this chain going back up uh, just beyond the top. Okay, so if you stretch this back out um, like so, you want it so that it comes up and just down a little bit because when you go to go to um, fasten this off in a few more rounds, you're going to uh, capture this all underneath the stitches so that you'll never see it. So just continue to go. So just make sure you go up over the top and then down a couple. And it's always better to trim the yarn uh, if you have more at that point, but just leave it just like so. I'm gonna trim it off for tutorial reasons because I'm pretty confident with it and it's out of position at this time. So let's move on to round number three. Let's begin round number three and I'm just going to create a slip knot just like so and begin. Now round number three for me was the determining point three years ago that made me not do this particular um, motif because I didn't understand. So essentially what you need to realize now is that these spokes are no longer being used for the next two layers. So what I want you to do is pretend they don't exist but you need to look for the stitches that are directly in the middle where they're not used. So this stitch here has this spoke, this stitch here has this spoke, but we skipped over one and that's exactly where we're gonna play. So, so just take this piece now and just fold it up over top and we're gonna concentrate right in the middle. And let's just join on our yarn at this point. And we're just gonna join it like this. Using the straggler and the strand going to the yarn ball, just pull through to join. And now let's chain three. Use that straggler in amongst it. So one and two and three. It's the best way to bury it so that you can trim that edge off later and not worry about it. Let's do two more double crochets into the exact same stitch. So it's right directly in the middle of that spoke. Let's just immediately just jump over to the next one. So just move the spoke forward and go right into the middle, the one that's not used, and put three more double crochets. That's all you're gonna do on this round. So this was a deal breaker for me years ago, but today I understand the patterns a lot better and that I can understand that. So once you get your three in, bend the next one forward. So you're bending it forward to get it out of your way so you can concentrate. Please do this for the continuation of round number three. When we come back, we'll do the next one we're going right to the very end and making sure you get to the last middle one of the last spoke. You're gonna have eight sets of three stitches inside each. Now it's not always easy to kind of see it from this perspective, so just turn it around. and You will be able to count your stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And once you get that done, just join it to the top of the beginning chain three to seal the deal. And we're not gonna worry about these spokes yet because those are gonna be, be pulling up but we're not ready to do that. We have to do one more round of blue and that'll be round number four. Let's begin round number four. We're immediately going to start chaining up three. So one, two, three. There's a pattern here and let me educate you what that is. In the middle of the sets of three, you're always going to do the following. You're always going to double crochet to the middle, chain one and double crochet. So you're doing like a V stitch right in the middle that. 
The next one is the outside of the three. You're just going to put a double crochet in there. You're immediately going to double crochet the very next one which is the next group of three and look at that. You're right directly in the middle again. So if you're, if you're going to follow my rule and the rule is, is one double crochet, chain one, one double crochet always into the center of the three of the group of three. Okay, so then double crochet and then double crochet because you're in the next group of three but it's the outside. Oh, there's the middle one again and that is a V stitch. So it's uh, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Please carry along all the way around the end and we are going to change the color back to white when we come back. I'm just going to finish up this particular round. So what I want to tell you while I'm finishing it up is that you will have noticed because you've done that V stitch right in the center of the three, you've now started to create um, multiple sides that are happening. So you can see that it kind of um, has formed a flat edge every time you've done that. You're going to want to pay attention to that because we're now going to be starting to work with that. So we're going to just double crochet in your final. So you have a V stitch your final and then just join it like so at the top of the chain three. We are done with this color blue for now. We are going to trim it at this point and just weave in the ends and then begin with white and we're going to be working with these uh, pieces once again as we uh, assemble the white on next. Okay, we fastened off the blue and now we're going to start with the white again. So this is going to be really easy. So all you need to do is that you need to look for the V stitch where the chain one exists. It doesn't matter which one you choose as long as you commit to one. And you're going to go right into the space. But before you do, because you've gone up like this, you want to put that, that spoking area, that chain, through your hook and through that chain one space and behind. So let's uh, just form a slip knot here and we're going to join that together. So just pull it through, okay, and just join it like so. And what I want to do is at this time I don't want to kind of use this area because we're going to bury it, but we're just going to chain three, one, two, and three, and let's go into that same space going between this spoke here and that space in the back and we're going to double crochet four times. So make sure we get that straggler into position so we can bury it. So one, two, this is three and four. So you now have a chain three and you have four double crochets. That means that you have a total of five. Now that you have that done, chain one first and now let's look back down to this row. So let's just move this out of the way so you can see it you will notice that you will have in between the V stitches four posts. Okay, so it doesn't matter which side that you look at, you always have four. What you need to do at this point after you do the chain one is that you just go in the middle, just the middle gapping area between, um, see you got four, just go right in the middle of the of this group of four and just slip stitch and then chain one. So once you've chained one, before you start this next V with five double crochets there, you have to move this spoke up. So just push it up and just double crochet in between the spoking area going right through the space on the back one and just double crocheting as if they're one unit. And you will do that with a total of five double crochets. So this is three, four, and five. And after you get that done, chain one and again you're in the same situation. You have four posts here that you can see go right into the middle for a slip stitch. Chain one. Okay, so then move the spoke up and go into that uh, V stitch in the back and five double crochets. Continue to do that all the way around on this revolution. Okay, I'm just finishing up my last one here. You know, if you ever wanted to do um, a pot holder or anything like that, you could always use cotton yarn and just stop here and you'd have a most amazing, uh, probably a hot pot holder as well. So we have our five in, we chain one, we come back into the middle again of the four posts that you are left for a slip stitch and then we chain one and then we slip stitch to the beginning, top of the beginning chain three that we started with. We're going to fasten off this yarn. Now we're done completely for the white for this particular motif. And the next uh, layers will all be blue. So just fasten off. We'll be back in just a moment where we'll have the next yarn ready to go. 
Let's begin with round number six and round number six is uh, second last round and we're just gonna join it with, we're just gonna start off with the slip knot. So this is a really easy round, really it is, you just gotta remember it. So all you have to just do is look in the middle of the five and you're gonna go to a back loop only. So remember with the rules of crochet that both strings equal one stitch, the front string is the front loop, the back string is the back loop. Let's just join that to the back loop only. Okay, and we're just gonna chain one. Notice what I'm doing with the straggler because this is sitting in an area that if the straggler falls out, you may see it. And then we're just going to single crochet into that same spot. And now it's good to go. So what we need to do is that we are going to create new points that are gonna exist in here. This motif never ends up being square at all. In, in actual fact, there's eight sides. It'll be like an octagon at the end of it. So what you need to do at this point is really simple. We are just gonna start off with, and we are just going to do um, trebles. So we wrap and wrap, and we go right into this blue area here, right over top of this white. So we wanna bury that white from showing because then that'll make it look like all the petals are sitting by themselves. We go right into that space and we're just going to do a treble. Okay, so that was one. We then chain one and do another treble. So we wrap and wrap, same space down. Now, here's the thing. There's always gonna be two trebles on one side of this and then there'll be two trebles coming up over here. So in the middle, we have to chain two, one and two and then we come back and we do another treble in. And I will review this again, so don't be panicking. You're going to chain one and then treble into that same space again. So all of that is, is in between the top peaks of the snowflake. Okay, so we had one treble, chain one, one, uh, one treble, chain two, because that's the middle. Then we had a treble, chain one, and then another treble just like so. What we have to do now, we come back to the begin or to the group of five here and just choose the middle one, okay, and we're going to do a single crochet. Okay, so do you see what just happened here? You've just buried that space of this white, so therefore it looks like it's sitting by itself. So let's begin another one. So we're just gonna treble and we're gonna go to the next blue space that's right in between. So just gonna reach over, just do one treble, chain one, another treble. Okay, so that was one half side of it, so that means that you have to do two chain now, and then treble again. Chain one, and then the final treble of that same gapping area, just like that. And then once you got that done, go to the next group of five, middle one, and we are just going to go the back loop only for a single crochet. Please do that all the way around. You're going to notice that you're gonna start having peaks like this coming out, and that's exactly what you're looking for. When we get it all the way back around, you can see how pretty it looks now, is that we are just going to join it with the, t uh, the beginning single crochet. And this is going to be the start then of the final round, and the final round is done in two different ways, because the first uh, motif is gonna stand alone, so you're gonna wanna finish it completely, and then once you get that first one done, all the rest of the motifs are gonna be joining to this one as you go, so you're just gonna start uh, joining them together. So let's come back, and I'll show you round number seven. Let's begin round number seven. Round number seven starts off the same way for all of them, and it's just a matter of just joining them to the other ones once you get to a certain point. And I'm gonna show you how to do the basic of the main round first, and then I'm gonna show you how to join them because it's all really same. So what you're gonna have to pay attention to is that you have these outside ones just like so. Pay attention to those because those are slightly gonna be handled differently when you're going all the way around versus the ones in the middle because we're gonna be creating um, like these V-shape ideas and it's gonna be really confusing for you but just keep an eye for these ones right here as we go around. So let's uh, begin to do our first one. So we're, just remember that right now we're starting in the middle of where these exist. It makes a huge dif difference if you can visualize it that way. Let's uh, begin, we're gonna chain three, one, two, and three, and we're going to double crochet into the same stitch coming back down. I would recommend going right down into this white area right here, this gapping space, and let's double crochet down there, just like that. Now, what you have to just do now is just chain one, 
and then come back down into the same space and put two more double crochets. Okay, so you got that. So now what we have here is that we have, we're looking at the next corner coming up. Single crochet into, the, in between this gapping space here. Okay, so it's in between and then we're going to start and do this next corner. Now the next corner is handled slightly different but it's the same in all of them is that we are just going to immediately just double crochet twice. One and two and then chaining of three. One, two, three and then double crochet two more times into that same space. So I really wanted to get you beyond that because what's going to happen is that you're going to start seeing a pattern. So now that you have that done, single crochet in between the next two trebles here and look at that, you're back into the center point right here, right on top of the leaf or of the snowflake. So what you're going to do is you're going to do exactly what you did over here but this time you don't have the chaining of three. So when you're in the middle, you just simply come right back down into the gapping space, put two double crochets like so, chain one, and then two double crochets. So it's basically the ones that are on the corners get the ch uh, chain three into there and the ones in the middle only get chain one. Once you get that in, come back here, you're going in between the trebles, you're going to single crochet. Okay, and then basically you're back on the next corner. So it's two double crochet. So it's the corner so that means it's going to chain three. One, two, and three and then come back in. Okay, so let's put in our single crochet in between the two trebles here on the other side and let's come back down to the middle. So we're now in the between and then remember that's two double crochet, chain one and two double crochet. So that's how you would go all the way around. So you're getting the theme here but what happens when you need to join it to a neighbor? Because once you get this first one done, you're always going to run into a neighbor. So in the next uh, part of this, I'm going to show you how to join the next two together with the neighbor. So once you get your first motif going on, you're going to want to do your second and you're going to attach it. Now there's going to be eight sides of this so you just have to pay attention that when you're attaching these is that you're leaving space for the center square, right? So, so you just look straight down. There's three attaching points for these motifs when they're joining next to the neighbor. Even, even from the side to side there's three points just like that. And so when you're joining them you just got to be very conscientious that this one here for example you don't get up closer so that you don't leave space for that square and it's just a really easy way to do it. Now here's the tip that makes it really a lot of fun to work with. So just come back right back and I'll show you that in just a moment. So we're about to attach this motif to this. Do you notice something? You can see that there's an octagon shape happening here even though you have a lot of V-stitches. Do you see that it's actually like a stop sign? That these are flat, 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 and flat? That'll give you a really good indication of where you need to attach these together. So I'm just going to come straight down and just attach it here. So they'll never attach to two of these at one time. They'll only attach to one. And, and except for in the, in the fact that you may have one over here, then maybe as you're coming around you will attach it to this one and then this one at the same time. And pretty mu much that's it. When you're doing this afghan, you're going to want to do all the large motifs together and you'll leave out these middle squares and do that at the very end. So when we're coming all the way back around, do you remember how we were just doing our special chain work that we were doing of chaining one in between here and then chaining three on the ends? We have to now substitute those for slip stitches that attach to the neighbor. So let's uh, finish up this side here and this one here is a single crochet. And now we're going to start off this uh, next one here. But what we need to do is that in the middle here we need to start attaching to the neighbor. So we're going to start off and we're going to chain our uh, double crochet two times. One and two. So what we were doing that this is a main corner so that would be chaining a three. So we have to substitute it in order to attach it to the neighbor. And how we do that is that we chain one and we go to the neighbor and we look for the appropriate one that's available right here. Make sure that these are facing up in the same direction, okay, so that you are not having one that's upside down. You're just going to slip stitch it around. 
So just inserting into that same stitch on the other side, just into the gap, insert in and just pull the yarn through. That's a slip stitch and then chain one. So when we were doing the corners, we were chaining a three. So in this case, it's chain one, slip stitch, which is chain two, and then chain th another one, which is chain three. Then we double crochet back into the same motif. So we're gonna carry along on this one. So then we single crochet into this motif. So let's begin. We're right into the middle here and we're going to double crochet. And we're gonna do that twice. Do you remember? We're right in the middle. This time though, we would have chained one and double crocheted back into this one here two more times, but we have to attach it again to the neighbor, okay, to make that work. So what we have to just do is that we don't chain one first, we immediately just go into the other one and just slip the hook through and slip stitch it just like so and that counts as your chain one. Then double crochet the remaining of that same stitch. So now you've just attached it there. You're into the trebles here, just single crochet into there again. We have one more corner to attach to, so we begin to double crochet. Okay, so it would have been a chain three normally, but what we have is chain one. We go to the other motif, grab the same spot on the other one, pull it through, that would be chain two, and then another chain, that would be chain three, and then double crochet back in for two more times. So as long as you understand that on how they attach, you can basically just attach these at any point within the tutorial in order to make it work. I would just not recommend that it's your very beginning or your very end. Just make sure it's a halfway point somewhere. And you just carry along. So we're just gonna single crochet and then this is the middle. So we're gonna put two double crochets, chain one. Okay, so if that was attaching to a neighbor, that would have been a slip stitch to the neighbor. But it's not, there's nothing over there. So two double crochets, okay, and then we single crochet into the next one here and then we're on another corner. And continue to do that same all the way around. When we come back, we're gonna be starting to do uh, the motif, the small one as well. And the small one goes really, really quickly. When you get all the way back around, we're just gonna finish off with a single crochet in between the two trebles and then we just join it with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three that we started with. And therefore, this motif is completely done and it's attached to the neighbor at the very same time. So it's actually a really easy uh, in order to concept in order to follow. So let's begin the square next, fasten off and the squares we are going to be attaching as we go as we do the round three. So we're gonna be filling in this little space right here. I will technically, if this was my afghan, I would finish the next one first so that this is completely just an empty square and not just one being left out. So in order to keep it within balance. So we're back and we're now about to create this little center piece in here. It's really not a square. I'm kind of saying it's a square but it's really not. Uh, we have to operate this kind of uniquely as we go around and we need to attach to all sides as we go. So this is one of those ones that you have to leave this to the very end. So you will have an entire afghan missing this whole section in between the large motifs and you just fill it in as you go. So we're gonna be using two colors. The, the middle color will be the starting color is your snowflake and then the remaining color is the exterior just like so. Let's begin to do the center and this is the filler motif as per the instructions and what we need to do is just start off with a slip knot just like this and just chain four. So one, two, three, and four. Let's join it with a ring like so. And let's begin round number one. So round number one, we're going to start off with chaining of four. One, two, three, and four. This counts as a double crochet slash chain one. So it's actually kind of two things going on within that chain four. You just don't realize it yet. So what we're going to do is that we're going to double crochet into the ring and then every time you do it, double crochet, do a chain one. So that's why you got your chain four. So just double crochet and chain one. Okay, so you will have a total set of eight posts going all the way around once you get this done. And then we're just done with the white. So if this were me and you have so many fillers that you need to do, I'd do all the white first. It's just easier than having to bounce off all the colors. Just uh, finish the white off and then come back to uh, and do, do them all and then come back and do all the blues next. It's just easier to remember. So when you're going to just count, you just remember by the post, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So I've gone one too many. 
So let's go right back to that last post to number eight. And then remember I have to chain one first and then just join it to the third chain up. Don't join it to the top because then you'll miss that one chain. And what I need you to do at this point is that I need you to fasten off at this moment. I have fastened off and now I just ended up with this. So what I have to do is that I have to pay attention to the gapping spaces plus the double crochet for the next round. In the next round it wasn't so obvious for me so it's just one of those ones that you have to wrap your head around it a bit. Let's begin with the slip knot. And we want to start off with is single crochet in any uh, double crochet. So right in the top we're going to join it with the single crochet. Just join it like this and then just chain one and then single crochet. Like that. Okay, so we're just going to pull everything nice and tight. So here is what is happening with this one here. In the gapping spaces we're always going to do the same thing. We're going to double crochet into, right into the gap, chain one and double crochet. Like that. The next double crochet that you're going to have is that you're going to single crochet into there. This is going to create like an eight sided um, kind of a spiky thing. <laughs> that's not a technical word but that's what I'm going to call it today. Here's the next gap so that's going to be a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And then we single crochet into the next double crochet available. So we have a gap so that means double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Continue to do that same thing all the way around just making sure that you got it and don't fasten off. We're going to have one more layer of blue and this layer we we'll start attaching it to the neighbor. So that's how quick these little things go. So we're just coming all the way back around and we want to make sure that we just finish off and we're in the gapping space. So it's double crochet, chain one, double crochet like so. And let's just slip stitch now to the, be, uh, to the actual single crochet down here. Now I'm going to have some tips for you here and you're going to have to wrap your head around it but it's going to be really interesting because if you understand exactly what you're doing in the next part it's going to make your life so much easier. So what you're looking at here is an eight sided object so you have everything that's looking the same. When you're inserting the filler in you will notice that it actually is inserting in like it's a square. This makes a huge difference on the way that you handle yourself when it comes to working on the outside here. So for example every time you're attaching to the very farthest corner, okay, you're going to chain one, slip stitch, chain one and then come back down. But when you're in the middle of the squares like so, you're just going to do it like you were doing on the other ones where you're going to two double crochets, slip stitch and then two double crochet in. It's only on the final points on the outside of the four that you're going to do that chain one, slip stitch, chain one and then back in. And that if you can get that into your head it is so much easier and you'll find yourself whipping al uh, along this really easily. So without further ado let's uh, just pull up the project. We want to make sure it's right side up so it's the good side facing up as we begin to join. And as you can see it looks like a square area going in and let's begin to do that next. As you begin number three you are just going to slip stitch to the chain one space. So all you're just going to do is just move along the edge with slip stitching. Just pulling it through. You want to get to a chain one space right into the center right here. Okay, so right into the gap. Let's begin and we're going to chain three, one, two and three and we are going to double crochet back in here. Here's the tip. This is one of the corners. Okay, this is one of the major corners of this. So what we need to do is that we need to chain one first. We look for a main corner of the attaching which is right here. Okay, it could be here or here or here but it's never in the center if you can get that. And what you need to do is that we just done uh, did a chain one. We're going to go into the joining one with the two sides facing up, the good sides facing up, pulling it through. So that would be a chain two and then chain again which would be chain three if you were in visualizing this as a larger piece. So then you're going to put two double crochets into the remaining. So then this is attached now to a main corner. So essentially now is that we're in the middle now of the two joins. Okay, so the next one is going to be a small and then we're going to be back to a major and once you get that it's really easy. So the next one here is going to be a minor. So we just immediately just double crochet two times. So one and two. So this is a minor 
and what you're just going to do, this would have been a chain one if it was just in between on the big motif, but this time we want to insert our hook into the other one to the, to the middle between the two points and just pull it through. So it's where it's got two double crochets in on this side, it's in between the two mega points and then we begin to two double crochets. Okay, so the next one is a major corner. So we're gonna put two double crochet. Okay, we chain one first and then we come down and now this time, see how they're attaching together like so. I wanna go right into this whole space. Okay, right into this space I wanna come up from underneath, grab the yarn, pull through like this. So that would have been chain two and then another chain which would be chain three and then double crochet back into that same little motif. Okay, so that was a major corner. So you see what I'm saying about major corners? It's at a major turning point, uh, intersection of the main motifs. This one here is a minor. It's in the middle. Okay, so we're gonna do another minor. So we're just immediately just jump over to the next chain one space. So two double crochet. Okay, this time, and then we go to the next minor on the other side right here into the chain one space underneath and pull through and then two double crochets back into the same minor motif and the little motif, right? So now we're on a major corner again so it's two double crochet. So if you can visualize this as a square you're gonna be laughing. So we're gonna chain one first. We go and look here. See how these two are attached there? We wanna just go right into that whole space Go underneath, pull everything through and then chain one and then finish off that small corner there. So chain or two double crochet. Okay, we're on a minor again. So we're just gonna put it in two double crochet. Okay, and this time we look again where they're joining. We go right in the middle. Okay, do you see that? So there's a middle and then there's another major corner. We're gonna go right into the middle. So it's easier to do this on your lap than it is to do a table in my opinion. So we're just gonna finish off that little minor like so. And we have the last major corner because I don't have any more motifs to go all the way around. I should have but I don't. And chain our two double crochet. So we chain one we go into the next one which is the major corner on the other side. Pull through that would be chain two and three. And then coming in to finish. Like so. So you can see that it's starting to attach together. You can see how it's like a, a square at this point. And so I, just for tutorial reasons I'm just gonna not finish the square because I think I might wanna finish this entire afghan on myself. I wanna get the next motif into position so that I can seal that in. But if you can understand like a major corner versus one that's right in the center of where it's supposed to be attaching right here, you can really whip these off really quickly. Until next time, I'm Mikey on behalf of RedHeart.com as well as the Crochet Crowd. Hopefully you enjoy this dusty snowflake tutorial today. Until then, we'll see ya.